two rounds, you're going to sleep. It's not going to hurt. I promise you, it's not going to hurt. A fight between Gervonta Davis and Ryan Garcia has been simmering on social media for years, with the two exchanging insults and questioning the validity of the other's resume. Ryan is a baby clown. <laughs> Tell him to get ready. Their bout, which will take place at a catch weight of 136 pounds, is scheduled for April 15, 2023. That is the most marketable fight that you can make in all of boxing right now. This could become one of the biggest fights in recent boxing history, in terms of the star power that both of these boxers attract. Davis is one of boxing's pound-for-pound -pound hardest punchers and has experienced success from super featherweight to super lightweight. He's the lightweight Mike Tyson as far as I'm concerned. He defended the WBA title against Hector Luis Garcia at the beginning of January, beating him via TKO. With over 9 million Instagram followers, 24-year-old Ryan Garcia does not look like boxing's next superstar. He's young, he's very talented, and he has a very bright future. The last time he fought was in July, beating Javier Fortuna via knockout. This isn't going to be a fight that will save boxing or one that will change the course of history. I think styles are going to go out the window and they're going to clash. But it's going to be a fun, competitive fight that fans have been clamoring to see and should thoroughly enjoy. I'll be getting ready. I ain't doing no more talking. It just, just got signed that dollar line. Ryan Garcia and Gervonta Davis are identified as two of America's most exciting boxers. Since both landing at 135 pounds, speculation has been heavy linking both to a fight with both confident personalities each promising victory, Davis has been brought along nicely by Floyd Mayweather's promotional group with Oscar De La Hoya providing the path for Garcia. I'm proud of him. I want him to keep going out there being the best that he can be. Ryan Garcia wants the tank now. The fact both men have been mentored by former rivals adds even more intrigue into this superb feud. All he has done was beat the fighters that was put in front of him. Same thing that I done. However, Davis is such a star because of his power. The impressive string of knockout victories gave Davis the opportunity to fight for a large audience on television for the first time in his career against Ricky Dulé on the undercard of the pay-per-view event showcasing the match between Floyd Mayweather Jr. and Andre Berto on September 12, 2015. Becoming that, you know, that uh, main event fighter, I want to uh, step it up, you know, inside the ring and outside the ring. Only two fighters have ever gone to distance against Davis, including current lightweight championship contender Isaac Cruz in a high-profile bout at Staples Center in December 2021. No doubt, Tank Davis has the best skills in the entire sport. Davis's resume includes knockout wins over former world champions Mario Barrios, Leo Santa Cruz, Yuri Orkis Gamboa, and Jose Pedraza. He's not just devastatingly powerful, but is frighteningly accurate. What a combination! Left uppercut and down goes Clayton! Additionally, Davis's pure boxing ability is very much overshadowed by his strength. Awkward, but in this one, he's not looking at He showcased an ability to slip punches and counter with precise and mind-numbing uppercuts, weave his way out of trouble, reset his stance, and not rush his attack irresponsibly. Davis beat Hector Luis Garcia on January 7 as a tune-up, while Ryan Garcia elected on keeping his calendar clear until he faces Tank, meaning an April fight looks likely to be the next action for both men. The unbeaten Garcia has 19 KOs in 23 bouts and is already on a short list of callouts for nearly every high-profile fighter within 10 pounds of the lightweight division. I'm just determined to do something amazing, Entertain, entertain the fans. Garcia turned professional at age 17 on June 9, 2016. Since being recognized as boxing's top prospect, Garcia has moved up in weight from junior lightweight to lightweight, increasing the level of his opposition with strong wins against former world title challenger Jason Velez, Carlos Morales and Romero Duno. 
see it. Able to land that right now. He's down. He goes. Garcia scored the biggest win of his career with a seventh-round stoppage of ex-title challenger Luke Campbell in January 2021, then stepped away to focus on his mental health after going public a few months later about struggles with anxiety and depression. 15-month layoff. I don't think it's going to affect him one bit. He finally returned to the ring last April with a clear defeat of veteran Emmanuel Tego and then, in July beat Javier Fortuna scoring three knockdowns and defeating him in six rounds via TKO. Davis is 5'5 with a 67.5-inch reach, while Garcia stands 5'10 with a 70-inch reach. He came in to try to throw the uppercut, jumping in, he got caught right on the chin and went to bed. Garcia will enjoy a 6-inch height advantage over Gervonta Davis, so Garcia's trainer Joe Goosen will likely try to get Garcia to employ a strong jab, utilize his length advantage, and keep away from Davis's powerful shots. Ryan's a fighter who fights tall and, and throws that snap, that snap jab with the right hand, that check hook. Ryan Garcia has the skill and quickness to avoid being tagged by one of Gervonta Davis's heavy shots, but will Garcia be able to do it for 12 rounds in the defining moment of his career while avoiding the temptation to get into a slugfest with Davis? Garcia would have to control the outside, would have to really make him pay to get in. There aren't a ton of boxers out there with better physical skill sets than Davis, but Garcia's reach and size figure to be X-factors in a potential clash at 135 pounds. It could go either way, but if Javante catches him, it's lights out. What Davis lacks in reach, though, he makes up for with explosiveness and power. That guy can box. That guy, he could go he get can you. He, he could counter. His defense is responsible. The southpaw spent a lot of time backing up in the early rounds, but blasted a beautiful right hook out of nowhere that knocked down Barrios in the eighth round. He has the power to uh, hit guys with game-changing shots. Garcia is famous for the speed of his hands and his athleticism in the ring. Ryan Garcia has to put his ego in his pocket. While he may not possess the pure power or timely elusiveness that Davis does, Kingry might find a recipe for victory if he can outlast Tank into the later rounds, where conditioning makes all the difference. I saw Ryan Garcia get dropped. And if he gets dropped like that against Javante Davis, he's not surviving. Both fighters have limited flaws, which makes this such an intriguing matchup. Tank gonna murder that boy. Davis has much more power in big fight experience, while Garcia is slightly younger with a moderate edge in speed and conditioning. He catches Tank coming in, it's, it's sayonara, it's goodbye, it's good night. The fight between two young, undefeated fighters promises to be entertaining, full of bad blood, and has the potential to launch the winner into boxing superstardom.